Yes, hello once again and uh, thanks for joining me and uh, welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike TV where we continue to look at more of those old vintage off-roaders from the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. Now we have another nice batch of very interesting machines for you to take a look at here in this part 2 video and uh, so firstly uh, let's just take a look at an old classic from the Cotton Motorcycle Owners Club and uh, this time round it's a quite nice looking little trials machine. Now normally I do try and uh, get some background and details of the machines that I film at these kind of shows although this uh, particular example here is one that uh, seemed to slip through the net so unfortunately I can't uh, tell you too much about it other than it's uh, almost certainly a nice cotton trials frame with uh, what looks like a little uh, Motori uh, Minarelli two-stroke uh, motor uh, in the chassis. But I'm uh, pretty sure that the engine is a 250cc uh, motor but uh, again this is a very nice example of the kind of competition bikes that the British based cotton motorcycle company were churning out in those golden days of the 1960s and 70s. But again it's uh, thanks of course to the great uh, Frank Willoughby Cotton who founded uh, the company way back in 1918 until of course his eventual retirement in 1953. But this uh, type of composite tank and seat combination would have almost certainly been made of fiberglass way back in the day and uh, many of the other parts that went into building these cotton machines uh, would have came from other British manufacturers or maybe even others uh, would have been sourced direct from European countries. But you can just see how this uh, lovely cotton trials bike uh, would have made a great uh, competition machine because it had a very light steel frame and of course that pokey two-stroke uh, motor and feather light uh, bodywork which uh, are just uh, of course the sort of parameters that you require when you're looking for a competitive uh, trials uh, machine but again another old school competition bike from the well respected cotton uh, owners club now just to continue on the theme of the cotton motorcycles brand this next featured bike here is uh, racing legend Pete Mathias 1979 cotton EMX uh, works race bike and uh, this machine here has just recently undergone a full restoration by classic bike building genius Alec uh, Middleton and this uh, bike here is now owned by uh, Pete Hollinshead who tells me that uh, he's now offering the bike up for sale so maybe if you're a fan of the great Pete Mathia or the Cheshire Charger as he's been known then uh, if the price is right here you could maybe grab yourself a piece of motocross history if you were to uh, purchase this bike. Now these uh, Mike Etoff uh, cotton EMXs were of course powered by these uh, pretty awesome Rotax two-stroke motors and uh, as far as I'm aware this is a, a 360 or a 370 uh, motor and uh, in terms of their power output uh, these Rotax engines had a great reputation for their power uh, ruggedness and reliability and that's uh, why they were used on a multitude of different off-road bikes in the late 1970s and early 80s. Now the motor's engine casings were made from magnesium and uh, a big Bing carburetor was also used to feed it uh, with its fuel and because uh, this was the late 1970s this was still a simple uh, piston port engine and those uh, fancy things called reed valves were still uh, many years uh, down the line. But in this uh, particular picture here we can see the Cheshire Charger himself, the great Pete uh, Mathia posing for a quick picture with his old race bike uh, all reunited again after almost uh, 43 years. 
Now, when I spoke to Pete on the day, he uh, told me that he rode this bike for just one season in 1979, as of course the following year, Cotton EMX then it stopped manufacturing motocross bikes to, to start and do road racing. And uh, from 1980 onwards, they only uh, continued to sell the bikes that they had in stock. But one of the other interesting facts that Pete told me was that uh, he beat the great uh, Dave Thorpe at Mallory Park while he was uh, riding this bike. And uh, at an international race event the same year in France, uh, he was uh, also standing on the podium alongside uh, racing legends Brad Lackey and Roger uh, De Costa. But we'll uh, do a much more detailed video on this Pete Mathia EMX machine in a future video here on my classic dirt bike uh, TV channel. So make sure that you tune in uh, to see that. But it's certainly another piece of uh, motocross racing history. That's uh, Pete Mathia's 1979 Cotton EMX. Okay, next up we're going to uh, take a look at a couple of uh, very nice CR Hondas on display at the Phil Denton Engineering stand. Now, uh, as you know, Phil Denton uh, provide all manner of spare parts and services for every conceivable type of road-going and off-road uh, Japanese bikes, and they, they do tend to specialise in the refurbishment and restoration of uh, these kind of CR250 twin-shock Hondas. But uh, PDE Engineering uh, remanufacture many of the parts that they use on these Hondas and in many cases they make upgraded versions of the original uh, parts like these uh, lovely carbon fibre air boxes that are fitted to this uh, particular uh, bike. Now these two featured bikes that we are taking a look at here were actually raced by the American Twin Shock racing team at Farley Castle in September of 2021. Although everything about these PDE Hondas is certainly top quality. And uh, as I said, many of the par parts fitted to these bikes are all made in-house at the Phil Denton uh, workshops. And these guys are uh, certainly a good uh, contact if you're struggling to find parts for your old Honda Red Rocket and it's certainly worth uh, giving them a call if you need uh, special parts or any kind of restoration uh, services. But if you're a regular visitor to the world famous Farley Castle circuit and you were there in 2021 then the chances are that you've already seen these bikes perform uh, on the track. Although for myself personally uh, speaking, uh, I haven't been back to Farley Castle since 2013 when I was uh, asked to leave the track for what was apparently uh, illegal filming of the race of the racing, but uh, that's another story for another day. And uh, maybe the less said about that particular instance, uh, the better. And so, uh, anyhow, getting back to our uh, Denton Hondas. Now, uh, this next featured bike is another of the 2021 American team Farley Castle Twin Chokers, and this number four bike here was ridden by the great uh, Doug Dubach at that uh, prestigious event in 2021. Now, don't ask me what mods, uh, if any, were done to these 250s to make them uh, quick enough for those American riders because I don't actually know and I never really asked on the day but I expect there will be one or two little trick parts fitted on them to give the bikes a little edge over what would have been uh, the stock settings. And uh, also in our case here it looks like this bike's uh, even been signed by its rider so uh, that in turn of course might add that little bit more history and prestige to this uh, particular machine although uh, I'm not really sure if both of these bikes were for sale or just for display purposes but uh, I expect that uh, if you were a collector of old twin shock race bikes uh, one or maybe even the two of these 
CR250s would certainly look great just sitting next to anyone's workshop uh, full of these type of old classics. Although back in the day when the first of these Honda Red Rockets appeared in the UK in the late 1970s, the motocross world had certainly never seen anything like these bikes before when they arrived with their blood red paint scheme and those red painted two-stroke motors and they certainly took the world by storm and uh, soon after their introduction to racing and it seemed that uh, everybody on the planet just had to have a Honda Red Rocket and uh, the Honda factory was uh, working flat out to satisfy the huge demand for these uh, iconic machines. But this particular pair of uh, Honda 250 uh, Red Rockets on display on the Phil uh, Denton stand are maybe uh, anything but original bikes from that era but uh, it just goes to show exactly uh, what you can do to these old twin shockers with regards uh, refurbishing them and making them more user friendly by fitting uh, upgraded parts to make them run and handle better than they would ever have done uh, back in the late 1970s. Now one of the other parts that uh, PDE had on their stand on the day was this 1976 CR250 frame which is uh, said to be part of the very first Honda 250 motocross machine ever imported into the UK and this uh, frame was imported by Honda UK for Kevin Ruddock to ride in his first year of adult motocross. And in uh, this picture here we can see uh, Steve Denton with his uh, precious frame although I'm not actually sure what uh, his intentions are with this frame but it uh, looks like he's in the process of rebuilding a brand new bike uh, from that chassis. And so uh, next up we uh, move on to my uh, YouTube channel's namesake, the classic dirt bike magazine stand uh, to take a look around this lovely 1974 GS250 KTM uh, Twin Shocker and this featured bike will be uh, in their brand new issue number 61 of uh, their magazine. Now it's said that this uh, model here was uh, the transitional model uh, of KTM because it uh, used the older 1973 engine which was uh, at the time uh, KTM's uh, very first in-house built uh, motor which uh, was then of course put into this new uh, 1974 frame and it was often described as the Tubino as it had uh, small diameter frame tubes that ran from the footrests right up to the seat rails. Now the bike is currently owned by uh, Mauro Sipolat uh, Gotet uh, who, <laughs> who bought the bike in 1988 and used it uh, quite regularly in enduro races uh, near his family home in northeast Italy and eventually uh, Mauro uh, then brought the bike back to the UK in order to do a full uh, restoration. And uh, as you'd expect, every single part on this bike needed some kind of work or another. And uh, luckily, enough of uh, the bike's factory fitted parts were saved to retain uh, the bike's originality. Although essentially this has still been a top quality uh, restoration because you Certainly don't see many of these old GS250 KTMs going around these days and parts like this exhaust system are not very easy to get your hands on although this pipe will almost certainly be one of the original parts that were restored. Now as we move to the back of the bike we have these Italian made Marzocchi piggyback rear shocks which uh, I suppose were quite radical for 1974 with those uh, fancy cooling fins on the oil uh, reservoirs but uh, old school drum brakes again of course as this was still the early 1970s and hydraulic disc brakes were still a few years away yet. But once again a fine job's been done on the restoration 
of the KTM's fuel tank, uh, secured of course onto the chassis by that uh, leather strap uh, down the middle. Now with regards to the front suspension on this GS250, again, I'm not entirely sure as to their manufacturers, but uh, these could be a set of Seriani's or maybe even early uh, Marzocchi's because of the suspension that's fitted to the back of the bike. But again, uh, a drum brake uh, on the front and of course those lovely alloy uh, wheel rims. Now most of the bike's controls, including the levers, grips and this gasser throttle are all uh, Magura parts and the rear exhaust pipe uh, will almost certainly be fitted with some kind of baffle or spark arrester if it's been uh, taking part in enduro events. But you can read the full story in the background on this lovely machine if you just pick up the latest issue of your classic dirt bike magazine. Okay, so uh, next up, uh, I'll look at a few machines that were on display at the John Hand uh, Racing Corner at the show. And uh, first up, it's this uh, lovely looking uh, JHR Honda 500. Now again, I'm not uh, sure if this is an actual uh, JBR Honda that John's uh, fitted his own trick parts onto, or if this is actually uh, one of John's own chassis that he's uh, put together himself. But uh, John Hand at one time uh, was a chassis frame builder for Wasp, who uh, of course specialised in the construction of sidecar motocross chassis, and uh, they also built uh, frame and frame kits for many of the older Triumph and BSA solo bikes uh, of their day. Now John of course has his own company now called JHR uh, John Hand Racing and again he's uh, began by building frames for customers who need a personal bike building service and you can see here uh, the quality of John's work in this lovely four-stroke Honda 500. And uh, this big XR500 uh, power plant certainly looks like it's had that uh, Cerakote ceramic coating added to this uh, clutch casing and uh, many of the other parts including these footrests and brake levers are all uh, top quality and even uh, the primary drive sprocket on this side of the engines uh, being made from uh, billet alloy. And yet again, more uh, exotic ceramic coatings being added to the ignition side of the engine, but it certainly all looks the dog's bollocks and there's some very nice uh, engineering taking place here. But another nice touch on this bike are these twin Yoshi Mura exhausts on either side of the bike. And again, these pipes are top of the range and I'll bet that they sound fantastic when that Honda motor gets fired up. And uh, once more, uh, more John Hand Exotica fitted to this bike with this uh, carbon fibre uh, side panels. Uh, certainly no Mickey Mouse plastic on this bike, just uh, high-tech uh, racing materials. Now at the front end of this bike, it looks like John's gone for a set of Italian-made uh, Marzocchi forks, which are hugely popular with all manner of twin shock uh, motocrossers these days and uh, they'll uh, fit in very nice with those red anodized SM Pro Platinum alloy wheels. And of course, as you'd expect, the uh, JHR customized race seat with the JHR logo uh, stamped uh, onto it. And these uh, alloy uh, fuel tanks that you see here are uh, copies of the old CCM fuel tanks, which you'll find are also uh, painted in black with the British flag when they're uh, fitted to the JBR Honda twin shockers. But uh, without doubt, a superb specimen from the John Hand uh, manufacturer. 
Now, also uh, sitting on the JHR display was this uh, beautiful Rickman Matisse Triumph with that superb Rickman built chassis and the big uh, Triumph uh, TR6C uh, pre unit engine in the frame. Now, if you're in the market for a, a piece of racing history to add to your collection of old motorcycles, then these Rickman Matisse Triumphs certainly do make a good investment. And uh, if you have a spare £14,000 just lying around, kicking its heels, doing absolutely nothing, then you could certainly afford to buy this uh, lovely bike. Now, some of the specs of this uh, Triumph motor include uh, that it's uh, fitted with full race Thunder Con rods. It's got a high delivery oil pump, uh, full race profile cams, uh, Morgo tappets and blocks, uh, Mark III Morgo 750 barrels, a single carb cylinder head, and a BSA Scrambles gearbox and a full NEB a clutch plus uh, all of the chassis and its accessories have all been uh, nickel plated so uh, what's not to like about this uh, lovely machine but I'm sure you don't need me to tell you just what this Triumph twin motor would sound like through these twin tailpipes on either side of the bike but uh, it'll certainly be uh, sweet music uh, that's for sure Now, once more, a set of Italian-made Seriani forks on this Matisse Triumph with uh, what looks like a custom-made uh, brake anchor that's been forged in alloy. But I do have to say that uh, this is the very first time that I've seen a Rickman bike in this particular uh, colour, but uh, that's the thing about these uh, Rickman frame kits, because you can have your own personal bike painted in whatever colour or design that takes your fancy. But uh, again a nice Gunnar Gasser throttle here with uh, what looks like a set of Magura uh, levers and just as an added bonus uh, this bike here's even been signed by the great man himself, the legend uh, Derek Rickman. Although, personally speaking, uh, who wouldn't want a bike like this uh, sitting in their garage or workshop? And you can rest assured if uh, my lottery numbers do come up this weekend, I'll be uh, right on the phone to John Han to have this bike delivered to me uh, post-haste so that uh, I can just sit and admire its uh, lovely lines and, of course, uh, its obscure uh, colour scheme. Now, during uh, my bike show uh, walkabout, I came across this uh, very nice old 1974 Osa 250 Phantom uh, that belonged to Gary War. Now, I've always liked the look of these old Phantoms with that uh, lovely blue paint scheme and the orange striping on the tank, and uh, you just virtually never ever see these bikes racing on the tracks these days, and uh, Gary's bike here is certainly the exception to that particular rule because uh, I do know uh, for a fact that this bike gets well used at vintage and classic race events uh, all over the UK. Now, Osa were, of course, part of the big three Spanish motorcycle manufacturers with uh, Boltaco and Montesa being the other two. But uh, for their day, these Osa two-stroke engines it certainly had a, a bit of go about them for a little single cylinder piston port uh, 250 engine and I'm sure that back in 1974 these would have had a 36 millimeter Bing carburetor uh, fitted as standard and not this Japanese uh, Makuni unit. But uh, as I remember these uh, motors had a bore of 72 millimeters and I think it was a stroke of 60 millimeters and they also had a five speed uh, gearbox as well but overall uh, they were uh, pretty decent little engines but uh, maybe not in the same league as uh, maybe the CR250 
250 Honda Elsinores uh, of their day. Now as motorcycle fuel tanks go, they certainly don't come any more glamorous than this uh, Phantom fuel cell uh, with that superb combination of that electric blue and orange uh, striping and this uh, tank uh, back in 74 would have held uh, just over two gallons of pre-mixed fuel if you filled it uh, right to the top. But as you've no doubt gathered, uh, Gary's bike here is uh, not a fully original bike from 1974 because it does have a few non-standard parts uh, bolted onto it but uh, at the end of the day who really cares because I think it's much more important to see these bikes still run on the racetrack rather than uh, sit around worrying if it still has all of its 1974 bits and pieces still uh, bolted onto it. And let's face it, uh, just how many Orsa Phantom 250s have you seen uh, lately at your local vintage or classic event? Uh, not many, uh, I'll wager. Now at the front end of these Phantoms in 1974, I'm sure it was a pair of uh, beater forks that would have been fitted to these uh, Ossas and uh, these stanchions here could certainly very well be uh, of the same type, but uh, original or not, uh, it's just a treat to see an example of one of these Spanish made Phantoms. But uh, rather than being it's some kind of show bike that maybe only comes out once or twice a year. It's good to see that this bike's being used for the purpose it was originally made for. And despite it not having all of its stock parts from 1974, I can say a very well done to Gary for keeping it running and still racing on the track. And so as we move through the hall, next up we take a look at another Honda CR250 Red Rocket and this time this one's on the Elderfield motorcycles uh, display. Now Elderfield uh, motorcycles are normally your number one go-to parts supplier if you need anything at all for your aging Honda Red Rockets and uh, these Elderfield boys uh, supply the absolute lot with uh, every nut, bolt or washer that you could ever need for these bikes, including, of course, engine rebuilds and repairs and uh, just about any other service that you need to keep your old uh, Red Rocket uh, on the racetrack. And in these uh, short clips here, you can see the attention to detail and the workmanship that the Elderfield guys uh, put out on these twin shockers and uh, parts like this alloy airbox are upgraded replacements for the original uh, plastic items that would have been fitted in the 1970s but it's all uh, top quality and very well made and you can see that this motor here's uh, had the Elderfield treatment and you can see that uh, again the Elderfield guys have engineered an alloy replacement ignition cover uh, for this uh, particular uh, motor Although that's another reason that these CR250 Red Rockets uh, make such a good choice for twin shot racing is uh, that there are now plenty companies uh, who stock uh, spare parts and provide services for these bikes, uh, including Elderfield. So if you were uh, looking for engineering upgrades or specialist parts, then there's plenty of choice out there, uh, that's for sure. But uh, when you do get your old uh, red rocket given the once over and do a complete uh, restoration or refurbishment on it, then there's uh, certainly no reason that they can't look as good as uh, this superb example that was on display from the Elderfield uh, motorcycle guys. Now, uh, don't get me wrong here, this uh, kind of refurbishment is certainly not cheap, but uh, then again, quality isn't cheap to buy. And if you uh, want cheap, and nasty then you'll certainly pay at cheap prices but uh, for me I always think it's best to fork out at more pennies or pounds just to get a first class uh, job done. Although when I was taking a look around the show this year there uh, certainly uh, wasn't the same amount of exhibitors 
at this 2022 Classic Dirt Bike event, which is uh, more than likely all down to the dreaded pandemic and maybe even Brexit, as a lot of the international and European exhibitors uh, didn't attend uh, this year. But uh, there were still enough stalls and uh, displays to make a good weekend of it, even although uh, the spectator attendance uh, was also down uh, this year. Although without doubt, another couple of uh, superb Honda CR250 red rocket specimens uh, prepped and built by those very talented guys at Elderfield Motorcycles. Okay, finally, uh, just to finish off this part two video from the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show, we're going to take a look at Lewis Bell's championship winning 1964 Jawa Matisse at 560. Now this bike here took uh, Lewis to the overall win in the 2021 British Classic Motocross Championships and uh, Lewis uh, took the title on this lovely bike in the pre-1965 class. Now the specs of this machine are that uh, the bike has a Matisse replica frame with a set of REH forks and triple clamps on the front and uh, a pair of Dutch made Riger shocks on the rear. And uh, the engine is a single cylinder Czechoslovakian made Jawa four stroke 560 that has an NEB clutch and uh, interspan electronic ignition. Now, normally uh, these big Jawa singles uh, run on methanol fuel, which is uh, said to make the cylinders uh, run cooler and it naturally it also helps to increase the power uh, as well. And again, our little external oil pump is mounted here on the outside of the engine casing, which uh, pumps the oil around uh, all of the vital organs inside the engine. And uh, many versions of this type of system were uh, total loss lubrication uh, systems. And uh, the big uh, clutch is uh, situated here behind this alloy cover and is uh, normally a dry clutch as opposed to uh, one that runs in a bath of oil. Although uh, I'm quite familiar with this particular bike and uh, I've filmed it many times uh, racing in Scotland. So uh, there's plenty uh, racing footage of this bike on the track if you just uh, search and have a browse around at my YouTube channel. And again, a quite nice alloy fuel tank fitted on these old Jawa Matisses and uh, so much better to look at than that uh, common plastic type uh, fuel tanks. But uh, another glimpse at those REH front forks, which I said uh, also have the REH triple clamps on the top and uh, bottom, but a nice old classic to finish off this part two video from uh, Telford 2022. That's Lewis Bell's British Championship winning 1964 Jawa 560 Matisse. Well, so there it is, plenty more exotic race bikes to feature from the 2022 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. So uh, make sure that you join me next time to uh, check out more Vintage Iron when we all return to your number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel. <laughs>